not a wire. <laughs> I like three inches of weld left. Amazon ferry came. I am back in business. The last spool lasted me 10 years, so let's get back to work. That's it. Told you I was almost done.
So the trick to changing a heavy excavator attachment like a bucket or this without a quick change adapter when you have to pull out these big pins is one, you need an undersized pin, a dramatically undersized pin. These are inch and three eighths. I have this, which is a one inch barrel drift pin. Two, you have to kind of familiarize yourself with how your attachments hang when pinned off in, with one pin only. Um, I'm still getting a feel for this one, so I might have to dork around with it a little bit, but the idea here is I'm trying to position this machine in such a way that it's hanging from the top pin and that the bottom pin is unloaded so that I can get it out really easily. Let's see how I did. Not great, but good enough that I can slide that out by hand with no hammer. Now the undersized pin goes in. Now I'm gonna shift the machine to be hanging on this lug, on the undersized pin, so I can remove the other pin. Well, I actually missed by quite a bit. But since it's hanging, even though it's heavy, if you're even close, you can manipulate it to to get the last little bit. So now I can set it on the ground. And if the ground isn't perfectly level or square to the machine or whatever, this pin is going to come out super easy because it's got so much clearance. And that's how you unpin or repin uh, an excavator attachment. That works for buckets, that works for these forks, that works for whatever you may have. And it is so much easier than trying to get it lined up just exactly right on that first pin and hammering a pin in and not knowing which way to make adjustments. And yeah, it's a nightmare. This works great. Highly recommend it. So to attach the blade, you just heave it in place like that. I have two short lengths of chain. Just do that. I'm really happy with this as an attachment method. I thought about it for a while, trying to come up with something that bolted on or pinned on. Didn't want to significantly modify the machine. I didn't want to be boring big holes. One, because it'd be a huge pain getting down in there. And that's a one inch plate I'm chaining to. And I want it to be really dirt resistant. You can see that just piles of dirt and rocks and debris end up in here. And this, you can't jam this. You can't foul it up. There's a tree branch in that one. I just wrapped the chain around it. It's part of the system now. It doesn't matter. So, that works great, and it's sort of field adjustable. If the, Depending on what angle I want, if it's a hair off or whatever, I can adjust that a length at a time to get whatever length I want. So that changes the angle of the forks with relation to the machine. So using chains and hooks like that to attach this is has been a phenomenal solution. That's working fantastically well. So the forks are finished. They came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, there's some limitations. They're sort of fundamental to the machine. The biggest one is this. This is the this part of the arm is the dipper here. This this dipper is in the way, particularly with tall pallets like my firewood pallets. I can't get these forks right against the base of the machine, which means when I'm picking up something heavy, I'm a long way away from the footprint and it's not stable. The machine is strong enough to pick up a fully loaded firewood pallet out at this range, but the machine is not heavy enough, so it'll tip over. That's not a huge deal. There's 
an idea or two I might be able to pursue to improve that, but it's sort, it's sort of a fundamental limitation. There's not a ton I can do about it. Um, it can lift a lot more when it's mounted to the blade because it's closer to the CG of the machine. The challenge there is the range of motion. The, the forks rotate, and so the tips are too far down at the beginning, and the thing I pick up is tipping that way, and then as I lift it, it tips the other way. It's all workable, but suboptimal. Hey, it's Future Mike. One of the uh, advantages of being way behind in editing my video is when I get to something like this, I can pop in and provide an immediate update for how it's holding up. So I made these things most of a year ago, as evidenced by the amount of scratches, dings, and dirt on the paint. And I've been using them a lot. I've used these things to move firewood pallets, move other junk around the property using pallets. I unloaded a crate of roofing off the top rack of my van. I move brush and logs with them. I've loaded them with a pallet and raised it way up and stood on the pallet to work at height where a ladder would have been sketchy. I've even rigged them to the blade of the excavator and put a bunch of weight on them so that I could pivot around and pick up something heavier than I normally would be able to uh, reached out without tipping the machine over. So I, they, they work as, as the framework for a counterbalance system.
they've made this cool little stand for it so that it stores it up and out of the mud and I can pick it up with the arm or the blade without having to lift and muscle this thing around myself. So that's been nice. So yeah, these things have been an incredibly handy tool to have around. I'm really glad I made them. Everything's held up really well, so I sized things appropriately. I haven't had any failures. I haven't had anything bend. So this has been a very successful project. It is now all wrapped up and next up, something else.